2020 meeting of the Horse Racing Committee of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. It is approximately 11.32 a.m. Uh, my name is Brian Fitzgerald. I am the chair of the committee. I just have a brief statement uh, to make um, as this hearing meeting is being conducted using remote technology. So given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global pandemic, Governor Baker issued an order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of individuals interested in attending public meetings. In keeping with that order, the committee will convene this meeting using remote collaboration technology. There are a few considerations I'd like to note before we begin. First, all votes will have to be taken by roll call. So I will ask each member to register their vote, if any, individually. Secondly, I'll ask that everybody except the committee members to please mute themselves to help keep background noise to a minimum. And third, just to notice to everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, and so we will proceed with today's meeting. Uh, first, I just want to make a brief comment uh, and just acknowledge again all of the participants and speakers who have submitted public written comments uh, and the speakers who just spoke at our uh, public hearing. Um, I appreciate all of their input uh, and appreciate their time and efforts. Uh, the first item on the agenda that I'd like to address is the approval of our minutes from our meeting of April 16th. So I know that uh, Shara has um, provided all of those minutes uh, to the committee members. And I guess I'd ask if they uh, have any comments or changes to those meeting minutes. I do not. The, the only change, not, not, a, not a very minor one, Mr. Chairman, I, I was, I was uh, on page two, near the bottom of the paragraph, I, I was, there was a typo that lists me as Mr. Goldman. Just so there's no confuse, confusion, it should be Goldberg. We can make right. that edit. Great. 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 Yes. Other than that, they look good to me. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So do I have a um, motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 16th? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all right. Um, and I guess what I'll do is call upon each of the members to vote for the approval of the minutes uh, with the noted corrections. Um, Mr. Savage? Yes. Mr. Goldberg? Yes. Commissioner Cameron? Yes. Ms. Katona? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Fitzgerald, yes. So our meeting minutes then are so approved. Uh, we will move on to the next item on our agenda, uh, and which is uh, stated as the potential adjustment of the method of calculating the distribution percentage split between the breeds for purposes of funding purses, breeding programs, and health and welfare uh, benefits. Uh, as the committee members will recall, um, there is a uh, proposed concept in how the RH DF funds are being allocated with respect to each of the separate categories being for purses, breeding, and health and welfare benefits. Um, and I wanted to kind of generate a discussion with the members with respect to um, their thoughts on um, moving forward to see if there could be a potential amendment to the regulations uh, that govern us that would allow us uh, that ability to consider uh, separate allocations for each of those three categories um, 
and thereby provide the committee with, uh, in my thoughts, greater, greater flexibility uh, in terms of how these funds are, are allocated. So I guess I would call upon each of the members um, to just kind of maybe uh, make some comments in terms of their, their thoughts on that. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is, this is Gail. Um, could I ask Mr. Grossman to just review, I believe what we discussed was that A, legally it is possible to do this, but that it would require a regulation change. And then we discussed at the last meeting the two different uh, methods of changing a regulation, one by uh, as an emergency and one during the normal course of um, business, which would be, I believe, uh, 60 to 90 days. Um, and I also think that that would be up to the commission to agree with the recommendation of the committee. And I just would love Mr. Grossman to review that and make sure my, um, my recollection and reading of the minutes is accurate. Good morning, everybody. I'd be happy to do that, Commissioner Cameron and Mr. Chair and members of the committee, if that would be helpful. Um, Commissioner Cameron, your recollection is accurate. Um, there is some language in the Gaming Commission's regulations that addresses the split, um, and it suggests that the split be done in the so-called old way, or the way it's presently being done. So the Gaming Commission would have to have a look at their existing regulations um, uh, to bring them, um, to modify them consistent with the new approach if the committee elects to pursue that new approach. So that is accurate. And then uh, it could be done either by emergency, which means of course immediately, so we would have to get the matter on the Gaming Commission agenda, which can happen you know, in two to four weeks or so, uh, depending upon the existing commission agenda. Um, and if it were not pursued by emergency, it would take about 60 days or so to, to get into effect. So that's, that's that part of it. Um, there's the proposal itself, which we can discuss a little bit uh, as well, if that would be helpful, um, Mr. Chair. And yes. uh, I'd be happy to go through that too, and some of the law just to recalibrate um, the proposal. And for the benefit of um, any uh, people who haven't heard this before, who are on the call, um, so at present, of course, the committee makes a recommendation to the Gaming Commission as to the overall distribution percentage or what has come to be known as the split um, of the racehorse development fund between the breeds. And based on that percentage, the funds are distributed to the respective breeds uh, into the three categories outlined in the law. The statute, of course, directs that the funds allocated to the breeds be distributed in the form of 80% for purses, 16% to the breeders, and 4% for health and pension benefits. The new proposal would tweak that approach slightly in an effort to afford the committee, in theory, and ultimately the commission, greater ability to direct the funds to the specific uses it deems perhaps best. So under the new approach, instead of determining one split um, between the breeds at the outset and letting the funds uh, just flow from there in that same percentage, the committee would determine the split between the breeds for each of the three categories. So there would be an independent split determined for purses, a split for the breeders, and for the health and pension benefits. Uh, notably, the exact same number of actual dollars would be afforded to each of the individual categories as the statute directs as intended. So that is to say that 80% of the money uh, would still go to purses, 16% would still go to the breeders, and 4% would still go to the health and pension benefits. But the committee uh, could determine that they'd be distributed in different percentages by breed in each of those three categories instead of just one big uh, percentage split. 
As you know, the split is governed by Chapter 23K, Section 60, which is the statute that also created this committee. There is no language in this statute that would preclude this new approach to the split. In my opinion, it's entirely permissible, though there is absolutely nothing improper with the manner in which the split is presently calculated. There is similarly nothing improper with the new approach. Both are valid methods under the language of the statute. And there are a couple of provisions of the statute that I'll, I'll touch on real quick um, that uh, direct this opinion. So that's again, it's section 60 of chapter 23K. If you look at paragraph B, there's language that says that the horse racing committee shall make recommendations on how the funds received uh, uh, in, the, in subsection A of the, the section shall be distributed between thoroughbred and standard bred racing facilities to support the thoroughbred and standard bred horse racing industries. Um, so there's no uh, suggestion there that it has to be, the split has to be calculated uh, once at the beginning and not by category. And the other section that's interesting and helpful to look at is paragraph C, which says that funds received from the racehorse development fund shall be distributed between thoroughbred and standard bred accounts as approved by the commission. Uh, and then it goes into the percentages. But again, there's nothing in there that would preclude the committee from pursuing the so-called new approach. But again, just as a reminder, um, as you mentioned, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioner Cameron, um, if the committee does elect to pursue the so-called new approach, the matter would have to be raised before the Gaming Commission. So there is that to consider um, as well. But um, all in all, that's my opinion of the law that governs this um, and um, a description as to what I believe the new proposal is. Oh, I have one follow-up question, uh, Mr. Grossman. And that is, in your opinion, um, I, I am thinking about um, emergency versus um, the regular promulgating method for regulation. And um, where there is no racing presently, I, I'm just thinking, is this, does this matter, in your opinion, um, justify an emergency as far as moving forward in that in that manner? That is a question that will ultimately have to be determined by the commission as a whole. Mm -hmm. It depends upon the circumstances at the time the commission's considering it. Of course, we're in a rapidly evolving uh, situation. It may <laughs> depend upon the opening of racing at uh, Plain Ridge Park, um, and there are a number of factors that would have to be looked at uh, to make that calculation. So it's it's hard to say, but I think a case could certainly be made based upon what some of the realistic circumstances may be that this could be an emergency situation. Is it your opinion that there's no need for this committee to weigh those options and that that should be left to the commission? I, I do think that would have to be left to the commission. Certainly, if this committee has a recommendation, I think that could be in, uh, persuasive uh, to the commission, of course, as to the nature of the emergency and, and how, how urgent it actually would be, of course. Um, I, as the subject matter experts in, in that issue, I, I think the committee should consider whether um, it is an emergency or not. Thank you. Thank you. Would any of the other committee members, um, do they have any uh, comments to the, um, what Attorney Grossman has just presented? Thank you for laying out the case. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, so I guess in that regard, then, um, is, is the quote unquote new method or new approach uh, something that the committee wants to um, further pursue? Um, 
in terms of giving giving us a little bit more flexibility in terms of how the funds are uh, distributed. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I think as we discussed last month, it, it sounds like a a good idea to give us all more flexibility, uh, especially in light of the ever-changing economy. Um, you know, my concern last month was the expediency and uh, of making a change of regulations, you know, in the best case would take a few months. As I said repeatedly, this split is supposed to be done prior to uh, the racing season, and this might be the first time that happens, which is a good thing. Um, and I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, by putting uh, agenda item four today on the list that the committee will discuss a potential a uh, new allocation, a new split based on the original, for lack of a better word, method. Um, I think it's a, it's a good thing to go forward to seek the new, the new flexible uh, way of determining the split. And I think that I think we can answer a lot of questions if we discuss the split today, as we're going to under number four, and we we make an adjustment. I think that answers a lot of questions as far as the emergency nature of it. If we make a split adjustment today, then there's no emergency. Any, you know, the next split theoretically or presumably would be for 2021. Uh, when we look at that at the end of this year, at the end of this racing season and check 2020's metrics. So I think by the way that the agenda has been uh, set up, uh, by the time we're, we're through today, we very well may have answered the question and I think obviate the need for even uh, going forward with emergency regulation changes. So I think that's a positive. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, so that's news to me that that's what number four um, stands for. I, I read number four on the agenda as our discussions by category and beginning a process, um, assuming we decide as a group to move to the category um, methodology, which I applaud the chairman and, and Mr. Grossman on their creativity and coming up with a way that will allow the committee to be more tailored. But uh, I, I confirmed my understanding of number four with Mr. Grossman prior to the uh, meeting as well. So I, I'm in no position to be voting under the old method uh, today. And I don't believe that that's what number four is meant to do. Um, if, if I may add, I, I think that we really don't have a choice because it's not um, designated for a vote today. So the agenda does not call for a vote today on anything but the minutes. So I think that would preclude us from moving forward with any kind of a vote. Mr. Grossman, am I correct about that? Well, I think that was certainly the intention. It was just to figure out whether the committee is interested in pursuing this approach and then if it's interested in pursuing an amendment to the split if it's not going to pursue the new approach but i don't it, it seemed to me and this is just kind of my take um that it wasn't really teed up for final decisions um as to the split or what the new percentages would be exactly I made, I made a comment at the last meeting that I thought we should do that, and, I, and I'm fairly certain in my, my recollection that, that the chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Attorney Fitzgerald agreed that we should talk about doing the split today because it, it's going to take 90 days. We're right back where we were every year since 2014. And that is having a split that is ineffective for the year intended to be applied. Unless, of course, we go to the Gaming Commission and seek retroactivity, which we've decided we'd really rather not pursue every year. So um, I, I, believe we've, we, I believe we've had votes previous years without it being on the agenda specifically. Um, I'm just speaking from my experience with the commission. And we have inadvertently um, uh, failed to use the word vote, and we've always pushed that matter off to the next meeting because uh, it was not set in the agenda for a vote. So 
that's my um, understanding of how that works. I don't know that there's anything that precludes us from talking about the issue in the split, but that maybe we'd have to just call another, um, and that could be uh, that could be done very quickly, another meeting, right. and and then actually vote. Yeah, I understood completely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, and I would just like to to briefly call upon uh, Dr. Lightbound. Um, at, at the present time, obviously, um, uh, horse racing is 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 suspended. Uh, I believe, and maybe Commissioner Cameron, you can you can allude to to the vote. Um, in, in essence, it's been suspended indefinitely, and that was the the vote of the the, the commission. As it yes, was um, until further notice, um, we had pushed it back to a June one opening, but. Um, as you know, um, things are still uncertain, and it looked like um, at this point um, it wasn't practical to start it on June 1. So right now um, we have it in, uh, indefinitely um, or until we can uh, get a clearer picture on what's going on. Okay, all right. Dr. Lightbaum, is it, is it accurate, is it still accurate to say that there are no standard bread tracks open in the United States at this time? There are a couple of thoroughbred tracks, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And could you elaborate a little bit on some of those, um, just briefly, uh, there, are some, there are some unique circumstances to standard bread racing that may, um, that may which is why some thoroughbreds can race and, and standard breads have yet to do that. Yeah, part of it is um, the paddock time, the amount of time spent in, in what's called a paddock area. And um, that time period is much longer um, in standard bread racing. And um, so like at Plain Ridge now, we're trying to figure out if um, we can uh, run some of the races out of the barns and you know what type of extra security that would need and things like that. Um, the thoroughbreds uh, go into what they call their paddock area um, for a very brief time. And with COVID, um, they've even shortened that amount of time. So there's a very sh short amount of time there, which obviously leads to less um, problems with the personal spacing and all. Um, and that, that's one of the um, primary things that uh, differences between the two breeds. Thank you. Um, there, there are tracks. There are tracks. Uh, in Ohio is opening June sixteenth, and I have information for harness racing. And there are other tracks planning on opening. I know in Kentucky and Pennsylvania trying to plan on opening in June as well. So, you know, it's hopefully. Uh, yeah, I think Indiana is opening June sixteenth as well as Ohio. So. Um, yeah, I think um, Pennsylvania just came out with a thing that um, they can't open till the. Uh, casinos open. Well, that, yeah, that's a, that's that's a, that's another issue. Yeah. And, and and is that likely the scenario here? Um, right now, there's uh, nothing's tied to each other. Uh, the casino opening and the track openings are not necessarily tied to each other, but um, that could uh, change going forward. We really don't know at this point. But Dr. Lifebaum, is it is it the racing staff provided by uh, Penn National are all um, furloughed at this point? Correct, yes. They would, ha um, we've had these discussions at the commission level that um, they would have to uh, need the time to bring their staff on. And of course, when we're normally gearing up for a race meet, um, we're preparing for it, you know, um, several months in advance, getting the track ready and everything. So, um, Probably best case scenario is uh, once the kind of go ahead um, came, it'd probably be another month or so before um, the actual first race was raced. And, and just so I can understand the process, if the governor gives a green light and then the gaming commission gives a green light, is it then a Penn national decision or are they obligated to open? Um, that's basically, I believe would be up to the commission. Um, it's uh, that could fall under the area of a business decision. So, um, you know, they are a business and just like with the casinos, they need to 
um, decide when it's, um, you know, safe when they're ready to open and all. I, I don't um, foresee the commission forcing them to open before they feel like they're ready from a public health standpoint and all to open. And to, just to correct the record, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I, I misspoke earlier. The Ohio, Ohio uh, is starting racing next week, May 16th, or this, this weekend in, in Ohio. So Indiana was June, Ohio is, is it this weekend, so okay. F, FYI. All right, thank you, thank you. And just to go back to, in terms of the, 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 the timing, so if, if the governor were to, you know, lift the emergency order and the uh, gaming commission were to vote to allow the, uh, the resumption of, of live racing, we probably are looking at somewhere towards July to start? Um, you're probably talking um, at least the middle of June, I would say. Middle of June, okay. Which would be, um, well, I mean, we're already to the 14th, so um, if, you know, even if it happened next week, we would probably be talking uh, three weeks into June, maybe. And, and Dr. Lightbaum, isn't it your understanding that um, the governor's four-phased plan um, for casinos, we're probably talking later in those phases, correct? Correct, yes. And there's, uh, I don't have any indications yet that um, the racing would be before that. And Dr. Lightbaum, uh, my understanding also too is that our uh, live racing is still faced with, uh, are they faced with the deadline of July 31st for the legislation or is that not correct? Um, gosh, for some reason I'm thinking the July 15th, I think they gave it um, a deadline slightly before the end of the um, legislative session. So I think it might be July 15th. July 15th. Okay. All right. Okay. If I recall. And, and, and can you clear, what, what's that a reference to? I, I, I missed part of the question. Okay, so. The um, racing legislation um, has, is uh, scheduled to um, expire then. Yeah. As you know, the um, racing legislation usually goes about a year and um, it's been um, up a couple of times um, in, a, in short intervals recently. I, I got it. I just missed part of the question. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, uh, coming back to the uh, proposed uh, new methods of consideration of calculating the distribution percentage, I um, just kind of would like to see in terms of the committee members whether this is something they want to support to put forth to the the gaming commission to amend the regulations um, to allow us that that greater flexibility in making these decisions well well i know that mr goldberg and mr savage each um uh, spoke about the health and welfare extensively at our last meeting and is there a way to to think about that differently? So that may be a good place to start with health and welfare. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I, 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 again, I guess I misunderstood. Were you asking, Mr. Chairman, whether we as a group think it's a good idea to go to the new method? Well, to to allow that option to be made yeah. available. To allow that option to be made available to both. Uh, we as a committee, as well as for the, the Gaming Commission's consideration. Right. I believe we should do that. Yes. Yeah, I, I, th I think, Mr. Chairman, I mean, it, so it sounds like we're all in agreement that giving our committee more flexibility to okay. be able to attend to the needs of the horse community, thoroughbred and standard bred, uh, would be very helpful if we could take each of the three categories, purses, breeding, and health and welfare, and basically adjust them with separate percentages. So it might take a little more work for us, but I think we can do it and I think it would be helpful. 
you know, my concern, Mr. Chairman, was last month, and it's now this month, and it'll be next month as well, is these things take time. You know, change doesn't happen quickly. Uh, and and well, it's a, I think it's a terrific idea, and I'm all for it. Again, I, I, I worry about us talking together, hopefully at a table in the fall, uh, and still not having made any looking back at the 2019 metrics and then made any adjustment if necessary, right? Um, I think we're charged with doing the work of checking them, looking at the metrics after the end of each racing season. And if, if necessary, if we feel it's required to make an adjustment of the split. So my only hesitant, not hesitancy, but my only concern is that whatever we do, I think we need to put in uh, the machinations in place to allow us to adjust the split, hopefully before racing starts. It may not be till, till, till the end of July or July 1st or end of June, whenever it is. But I think we owe that to the harness racing horsemen the thor and the thoroughbred horsemen and everyone, all the investors. You know, racetracks are 50 or 60 million. They just built the standard red track last year in Kentucky. $150 million. So they're, they're not cheap. Uh, we all know that. I think, I think we need to get to, to do our work, if we can, either prior to racing starting or as soon thereafter as possible. That's my only caveat, Mr. Chairman. If, if we made the decision to um, look at the three categories differently, and we followed that up by a decision to allocate, um, I'm just thinking, can we do one at a time? Can we say, yes, we'd like this change and get that portion to the um, Gaming Commission um, so that can be promulgated while we're doing our work on the allocation or should that all be done at one time? I'm just trying to figure out the, the way that we should move forward so that, Mr. Goldberg, your, your time sensitive issue is addressed. And, and I have no objection to us working in parallel. Um, I, don't, I don't think we need to wait for the Gaming Commission to start discussing allocation by category. And I'm, I, I hear Mr. Goldberg's argument. I, I, I don't find it particularly compelling because there's nothing to split and there's nobody running. But I, I hear the argument. And so I'm fine with us working in parallel. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I don't disagree with that, right? I think, you know, th that's why I thought the sooner we discuss the split, even if even if we use currently the old method until the regulations are changed, there's nothing to say that, for example, let's just assume uh, on June 1st, we, we, we do a split and we change the percentage, if, if we do. There's nothing to say, in my opinion, and Mr. Grossman, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that we can't come back in October or September if new regulations have been promulgated that we can't come back in September and address the split again. This law doesn't say we can't address it twice in a year. So we could come back in September and say, okay, now we have new regulations. Instead of doing it this way, we're gonna put purses X percent, readers X percent, and the health and welfare X percent. So I think we can, we can have it both ways. We can burn the candle at both ends, I think. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, I, I, I think in terms of in terms of moving forward with the quote unquote new method, um, but we would have to have some uh, proposed language that we as a committee all agree upon uh, in order to have that, I guess, submitted to the to the commission. Um, and Attorney Grossman, you could you know. Um, provide any comments that you want, but that's just my, my thought process is, is if we work in parallel with the, 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 the two issues, um, you know, we at least have to come to some sort of consensus on the actual language that's gonna be, or that would be, that would be submitted to the commission. Yeah, Mr. Gwesson, do we have to, or do we have to, or should we be proposing a new, should we be drafting regulations to, supersede the old regulations regarding the split? 
Yeah, I think that's what would happen. Obviously, the staff can prepare something, but um, it does certainly stand to reason that the horse race committee would be able to have a look at it first and sign off on it to make sure that it is what you are in fact proposing. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any uh, harm in moving in parallel, uh, you know, with the assumption that we will present this to the commission and um, they may very well um, uh, go along with it. So I don't think you have to wait necessarily for that to take place before moving forward with the new approach, if that's what the committee wants to do. So, so if, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go do ahead. you, Mr. Chair, go ahead. You, you, know, you, have you, a, you, you can go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, so listening to all of those um, comments and listening to both Mr. Goldberg and Mr. Savage say that they were in agreement that uh, changing um, the way we calculate, meaning we separate out the three. I just wanted to add that I agree with that as well, um, particularly because of persuasive arguments on the health and welfare side. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So if we're working in conjunction to move forward on a parallel basis with, with those two issues, um, and we would need to place a vote on each of those two issues, um, then in terms of talking about scheduling a meeting to vote on those two issues, uh, I'd like to hear from the committee members in terms of, of scheduling. And I realize we're impacted by the fact that we really don't know what the timeline is going to be for live racing. What my preference would be is, is if the committee members do see that there is any sort of need for a change in the distribution, um, that that vote take place hopefully prior to the commencement of the racing season. So I, I'm not sure, I'm not trying this, I'm sorry, Emily. We, we, Just by way of clarification, am I hearing that we would have a vote to move or new regulations for the authorization to sort of tackle these items in a different way while we are in parallel developing the criteria? Or am I hearing that there's a feeling that we need the criteria beforehand before we can move for a regulatory change? Because I think if we're moving to sort of petition the Gaming Commission to allow us the flexibility to consider these criteria in a different way, I would push to move pretty quickly to do that since there does seem to be general consensus on this call. And then Correct. we can schedule another time where we could sort of more fully consider the criteria and nail those down. So I, I agree with that. I, I'm, it's not even clear to me that we need a vote on the, the idea of just going with three categories. I mean, we've got a consensus and that presumably can be passed on to the commission I do think we need a meeting to talk about the criteria per bucket. And then I think we need, and these don't have to be far from the other, a meeting where we actually apply those criteria and come up with a new split by bucket. I mean, that seems to me it's a, a two-step process. What are the criteria like they set back in October of 2014, the criteria for the aggregate way, we would set criteria now by bucket and then thereafter apply it to the facts on the ground. I would just add that I don't think the, the criteria don't need to go in the commission regulations. So that's something you can develop separately as a committee um, and work on. But I, I think I agree with what everyone has said. You could uh, just set a meeting to develop the criteria and then ultimately to apply the criteria. And it can all be done relatively quickly, I think. And so would we need a vote then, a formal vote of this committee to then petition the Gaming Commission for a regulatory change, or is that something that can be done by consensus? I think you could do it by consensus. Um, it seems like today you're working towards a consensus that you would like to pursue uh, the so-called new approach. And if that's the case, then we as commission staff can get started on drafting some uh, amendments to the commission's regulations. And by the way, they wouldn't have to be extensive. 
um, for the committee to have a look at and for us to approach the commission with. Um, and at the same time, set up a, a meeting to look at those and also talk about the, the criteria that you would apply um, in each of the categories. As far as adjusting the actual split is concerned, um, I think you should talk about that a little more here today too. It's unclear to me that you really would even need to adjust the existing split if you were going to pursue the new approach. So that is something it seems like you could leave in place with the understanding that you're, you're working towards um, a new way of looking at it. So and I, I think the two were put on the agenda today in the event that you decided not to pursue the new approach, that then you would pivot into looking at the existing split and whether it's something you want to adjust or not. Um, but if you are deciding that you would like to pursue the new approach, I don't, I, for one, don't necessarily think you need to get into the existing split. I think it is what it is. You can leave it in place um, and, and just move from there. Yeah, it, it's obvious that we can leave it in place. It's been left in place for two years at a time in the past due to circumstances. I, I just think that as a committee, we're charged with a, a duty to look at the metrics as we decided in October of 2014, to look at them on an annual basis and if necessary to make adjustments. And we're running into the same, this is just another unfortunately method of, of stalling the decision looking at last year's um, because it's, it's, it's not gonna get done before racing starts if we have to look at the three, the new approach or the three tiered approach, which I'm in favor of. I think it's a good idea and the flexibility uh, is, is good. We could still, we could still use the old method under the new method, but we don't have to. Um, so I, I'm just thinking it's not, it's something that's not going to happen in, in 60 or 90 days. You know, maybe it will, uh, maybe I'll be, uh, happily, uh, surprised but I just don't um, and I, I, I see racing starting uh, with us having not looked at the old at, at, the, at the 2019 metrics and made any decisions on a new allocation which I, I know I know that's what my brother Mr. Savage would like and I understand that that the thoroughbreds would like to keep everything the way it is because the metrics are so clearly favor a reallocation of the split and I think we as a committee owe it to the Commonwealth, to the citizens of Massachusetts, especially, especially in light of these times, to make a change. We've already had legislators try to change, take our percentages and knock it down from the 9% to 4%. I'm not sure how anyone's going to be able to defend 18, 20, 21 million dollars sitting in an account for an industry that's not even, that's not operating. And, that, and, and I think the thoroughbreds are being short-sighted because they get the money, the, the purse account keeps rising, it's held in escrow. If the legislature comes in and reduces the, the RHDF, and they say, ah, you know what, you don't need, you don't, we're gonna give you 65% now, because that's all you need, because the thoroughbreds aren't even racing, they're not even operating, so we're gonna take away 35%, now we come back next year, or whenever the thoroughbreds start racing, and now our pie is a 65% pie, we have to divide that up. And that would be unfortunate for both industries. I think, I think right now, as a committee, we need to protect the Racehorse Development Fund. That's our job. I think we have failed. If we're sitting here next year and our fund is, you know, instead of 9%, it's 4% or 6% or 8%. If that pie starts shrinking because we don't do our work or do our job, shame on us. And I think it's being, I think it's short-sighted of everyone to say, ah, just leave it the way it is. That's not gonna work. You know, I appreciate all the thoroughbred comments. They were wonderful, every one of them. I don't disagree with anything. I'd like to see a facility. You know, we've been hearing that now for years, and that's great. And they should continue. 
but but the reality is right now it's 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 we are where we are and they're looking at the future every thoroughbred speaker talked about the future keep it where it is so the future is brighter chapter 23k section 60 talks about a retrospective look it says we look at the past and then that's how we make the adjustment and i and i you know anthony spieta who spoke today i wish i had a recording of his comments in my law office in 2013 where he told me in no uncertain terms peter we have to follow the statute we have to look at the metrics from 2009 10 and 11 and 12 and that's the way it is. So we got 25%. The metrics have changed dramatically. And the metrics are so much better for the standard breads now, we should be getting more than 75% based on the thoroughbreds argument back in 2012, 2013. So my problem with this is I don't think we're doing our job. And I think we risk, we're going to risk our pie getting eaten by the legislature and if we do that if that happens my hands are clean and i think we should take actions to make sure that doesn't happen and i think i think we're all not being honest everyone if we don't think that the legislature is going to say geez that 20 million dollars the thoroughbreds have when they haven't erased in three years nah that's not better for the homeless people or the people right the millions are out of work that, that's not better for the people that aren't eating. Let's give it to them. Standard Reds have spent every dollar of the money from the Resource Development Fund since its inception. Every dollar. And every dollar is going to good use. They won't take the money if it's going to good use. And it's increasing open space. And it's increasing the agri, uh, the agri economics. They won't take it. But the way it's situated now, the millions of dollars every year going and sitting fallow, we're going to lose our pie, folks. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. Just briefly, I, I have no idea what that actually was in response to. I don't particularly appreciate Mr. Goldberg telling me what my views are, but maybe he's got insights into me that I don't even know about. But it's impossible to take the position that Mr. Goldberg took today having listened to the people who testified today. And it's not a matter of section 60 says look back. It doesn't say that. I wasn't around in 2012, so I don't know what he's talking about, but section 60 does not say that. In fact, it's a racehorse development fund. That is by definition forward looking. And this committee has taken that view in the past. I mean, I'll read from the minutes in October of 2014, when this committee decided to set up an escrow for a non-racing breed. And the reason it was done was, quote, to allow for and encourage the development of new facilities to ensure the continued racing of the breed. So it, it's our guiding principle has always been that the money is meant to, to promote horse racing, not some you know check the box off of last year oh race day, days oh race days I'll, I'll skip addressing the rest of it um because i don't think it's particularly relevant to what we're what the agenda i got is is about today okay thank you uh mr grossman i just wanted to kind of come back to you in terms of in terms of just the the the, the, the process if if the committee is is uh, expressing a consensus with respect to this new uh, method of consideration, uh, in terms of what is required to be submitted to the commission, uh, should we have a either whether it's a proposed regulation or a formal document or letter? Uh, to the commission that kind of sets forth the proposed new method, um, you know, in terms of their taking a vote to thereby uh, amend the regulations. 
So I guess what I'm getting at is do we submit a consensus letter or do we do we actually need to schedule a meeting in order to take take a vote on it? So well I'm I may even uh turn to Commissioner Cameron to weigh in on this as it's she and her colleagues who will have to uh vote on or have a look at the best okay. approach, but um I, I don't know if you have a specific thought, uh, Commissioner. Well, I think um, we need to correspond in some fashion, and we've we've done this in many different ways over the years as a commission. Um, I think the idea of a letter uh, proposing a new um, regulation would be appropriate. Um, from and and I thank you for your offer to maybe draft some language, just outlining exactly what we're talking about here today. The fact that. Um, we as as a uh, committee uh, wish the commission to um, to amend the regulation so that the committee has the flexibility to look at these three categories separately. So I, I mean I, I think that's certainly appropriate to, to handle it in that manner. Okay. All right. And therefore, do we need do we need to schedule a meeting of the committee in order to vote on that? on that letter. Um, Mr. Grossman, uh, you mentioned earlier that you would be willing to draft language and that the committee could then in fact um, take a look and make sure that's what we all understood when we talk about reallocating for the three categories. Um, you know, I think we're going to need another meeting anyway because we really yeah. do need to, you know, talk about what we're doing with those allocations. Um, so I, I think we could easily um, take a quick vote then uh, on, yes, we, we, we think this is appropriate. Mr. Grossman, you tell me, would you take, would you get a draft out to, to, to members and they could individually not comment? Obviously, we don't wanna have violations, but they could get back to you with suggested language if, if what you had wasn't, entirely what they were thinking and then that vote could be on that final draft what are your thoughts on that yeah i think that sounds like a sound approach actually we could do that get it ready get it all teed up for your next meeting um for ratification if you will uh, but at the same time you can also plan on discussing the yes. actual criteria and the final vote as to what the criteria should be um, it, so you're ready to go to move quickly as to applying that criteria. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's there's really um, no limit on how quickly we could move uh, this whole process. Um, I think we can have all the documents prepared and, and have everyone ready to go as quickly as you're reasonably able to do that. So yes, I think we can do all of these things in parallel essentially. The, uh, reg as I said, I don't think any regulatory amendment of the commission's regulations would be tremendously complex. Um, I don't think the letter needs to be tremendously complex. I think the proposal is actually fairly simple um, and it is one that um, I, I could probably brief some of the commissioners on so they understand what we're talking about too. Um, and it, you know, if it is the committee's consensus that this is the best approach, I think that would be a very persuasive uh, starting point, even though there's been no formal vote. So that's, I think that's perhaps Mr. Chair and committee members, uh, what you should consider at this point is we'll draft a letter, we'll draft amended uh, regulations, we'll circulate them to all the committee members for review. Um, you can schedule your next meeting um, whether it's today or, or shortly uh, thereafter, and we'll have a ratification or you can have a ratification vote then and discuss the any criteria. And I guess my, my question would be, Attorney Grossman, would be in that um, discussion of the criteria, would we then be able, I guess, could we at that point in time take a vote as to that proposed uh, allocation, like in other words, to separate out the three categories and and have the separate percentages um, allocated between each category, or 
do we need to have the regulation enacted first before we can vote on? I guess it's just, it's really, it's just a, a recommendation. So if we submitted all of it at the same time to the commission, could they enact the regulation, the amendment to the regulations and also then take a vote to, you know, whatever recommendation we make at that point with the separation of the different categories? You see what well, I'm getting at? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail right on the head, uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. with the recommendation part. Um, what you were doing is making a recommendation to the commission as to uh, what the, the split should be and how it should be split and in theory they don't have to accept it and they could send it back to you so i don't think it would be presum presumptuous on your part to send a recommendation to the commission that includes a new way of splitting uh, up the fund if that's how the committee is so inclined to move forward um, in the in the in the name of uh, time um, and mm -hmm consistent with Mr. Goldberg's concerns. I think uh, yep. we can get all this moving um, in, in a, a fairly streamlined fashion uh, without offending any sensibilities or anything like that. Absolutely. Great. Okay. okay. Right. Um, thank, you, thank you, Attorney Grossman. I think that's helpful. Mr. Chair, um, we yep. typically have, um, cons we have consensus for a new way of allocating. Yep. Um, we typically have a short brief from each of the representatives of their breed, kind of outlining what they think um, that split should be. And in this particular case, I think it would be three recommendations. Um, and that's typically helpful to other committee members to really understand um, the nuances of, of uh, this decision we have to make. Do you think uh, that would be appropriate in this case that they prepare such a document so that at our next meeting we'll have um, facts and figures and rationale to consider? And you're speaking of just, you know, we all have the, 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 the position papers that they previously submitted, but just something like an executive summary from each just to yes in, in okay. you know with regard to each because the the previous yep. papers uh speak to one split number as opposed yep. to three categories i personally think that would be helpful to hear from because of course we're not just hearing from these two individuals we're hearing from the entire industry uh about their thoughts on these three categories i, I that would be helpful to me and I, again it doesn't have to be war and peace it could be just a as you suggest, uh, an executive summary. Yeah. Yes. So, so yeah, my, I guess I, I guess I got slightly lost here. I, I thought what we were considering, or maybe only I was considering, um, a two-step process where we decide what the criteria are for each category, and then do the briefing around how to apply um, those criteria, and not to throw a, another wrinkle in here, but I, I heard a number of interesting things today from our speakers. Um, for example, that there are 35 breeding races run by the standard breads. I, I've been unable to reconstruct that. I've been to the, the SOM website. And so, so like when we're gonna talk about breeding, it would seem to me we need to know um, how the breeding money is being spent on each side to assess its effectiveness, for example. Or on the health and welfare, I heard today something that changed my understanding of the standard breads program, which I thought was was purely the pension program and that no one is immediately dependent upon that program. But now apparently there's eyeglasses and there were two emergencies. So I think when we get into this issue of comparative health and welfare and comparative breeding, we're gonna need as a committee a good understanding of how those programs work. And I don't know that. But wouldn't that be your responsibility to, to speak to the folks in the thoroughbred industry and, and have that information as part of your executive uh, summary to this issue? 
I can't get the standard bread information. Like we, we presented the information. We had maybe it was two meetings, our first meeting this year. You yeah. specifically asked for health and welfare of each group. And I, I presented the health and welfare analysis, which included the eyeglass part and included the benevolence part of the emergencies. It was in there. Um, and I think we may have provided something in writing, although I'm not sure about that. So we, we've been through this before, but I think Attorney Savage is right. I, I'd like a lot more information regarding the thoroughbred health and welfare program. I don't know who the people are that are getting these benefits every month. Um, not just the, yeah, I appreciate people are getting them, that's great, but I'd like to know who they are. You know, I think, I think that we all have a right to know who's getting this money. And, and I, I think that's a great point because we, we would like to know as well. Like we, we have a sense that we're, well, we know we're, we're helping hundreds of people and you saw the letters that came in that are poor and on the edge and depending on these payments. And as I understand it, and if Mr. Goldberg corrects me or tells me it wrong, it just makes my point that we need more information, that, that um, the folks that qualify under the pension plan, for example, would include owners who are wealthier than the people that are in our program. That may be relevant to this committee. It's, it's as, trainers and drivers. Yes, who are also often owners in, in the standard bread world. As they, well. own, they, own, yeah, they own houses, they own dogs, they own lots of things, and horses. Including horses, including. Yeah. But this, is, this proves my point here is like, I don't think we as a committee know enough here to be just saying, all right, let's, let's vote. Um, and, and so I don't know what, what you all think about the best way for, for Peter to be comfortable that he knows what he needs to know about the thoroughbred breeding and health and welfare programs and that I'm comfortable and everyone else in the committee is comfortable that we know enough about uh, the standard breads. Like I, I think I heard today that it was a million seven spread over 35 races, but I thought the number they were getting was a million eight or whatever. And that may not matter. That may be administrative money. It's, it's probably totally fine. I just, I literally don't know. And I don't know how we can meet our fiduciary duty without knowing. Okay. So then I guess, is there a consensus between the, the, the two industries then that there'd be an executive summary that would be prepared and presented to uh, our committee uh, prior to the next scheduled meeting. And obviously that executive committee, executive summary, excuse me, would be shared between the two industries. No, that's the opposite of what I, okay. But just was exploring, which is I don't think we can get to that okay. summary of how to apply factors when we haven't set criteria and we don't know the underlying facts. Like, I think we need to, to have a meeting, discuss how these programs work, have a consensus amongst ourselves that like, you know, maybe it doesn't matter whether the recipients are in state or out of state, or maybe it does. If it does to the committee, then that's the criteria. If it doesn't, it's not a criteria. Maybe it doesn't matter that it's means tested, um, and so that's a criteria or not a criteria. Maybe it doesn't matter that the money is going to be paid later, whereas other money is being paid now. Like, uh, it, just to be totally blunt about it, we're paying people every single week money they need. We should get the disproportionate share of health and welfare right now. Then, if if we need as a committee to true it up down the road because they had to defer some payments to a retirement plan that nobody's collected from or vested in, that's also something the committee can do. But I think we really need to have an understanding of where this money's going so that we can meet our responsibility. It would, I think it would be tragic to do some sort of adjustment or even maintain it where it is such, such that actual horsemen who are in poverty on the thoroughbred side stop getting checks so the, the, the pension fund on the standard red side can be funded for somebody someday to collect a pension out of state. That's I, I think, no sense to me. I, I, agree, I agree with Mr. Savage that we should know where all the dollars are going and to who they're going to. I, I, like to, that, I have no problem with that, that both, both industries should 
put in black and white. You got a million dollars for your health and welfare? How did you spend the million dollars? And who did it go to? Not it went to poor horsemen. That's, well, you saw our list. We submitted wait, But to, to me, that's, yeah, but the names are blacked out. I'd like to know, because I've heard all kinds of things about a, a poor thoroughbred horseman who are getting nothing, who are, are really upset by a lot of what's going on because they're getting nothing. So I think we, Mr. Savage is correct. I think we need to know exactly how the money's being spent, what the salaries of any of the people are that are working, how the money's being spent is a good thing. I have no problem with getting my industry to put together how we're spending our health and welfare money, how we're spending our breeding money. Absolutely, Joe, no problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Where it's being spent, how it's Perfect. being spent, and the economic benefit to the Commonwealth, we can fig then figure out, you know, if, if money being spent in upstate New York is better than money being spent in Plainville, okay, that's yeah. fine. Then we can make adjustments. I think knowing where the money's going is a good thing. The purse yeah. money, well, we know where the purse money is going. That's the easy one. But the health and welfare, so that's 80%. That's not, you know, we, we, understood. we don't want to delay all this. See, again, we're talking about 20% the, the, that, that, that's an issue one. Because the purse money is not an issue. We know where it's going. Theirs is going in an account. Ours is going out to purses. It's the 16% for the breeders. And I think we should, we all have a right to know where every dollar is gone for 2019. Let's put it out there in black and white. And the same thing for health and welfare. I'd like to know where every dollar is gone and to who, it's, who it went to on the thoroughbred side and the standardbred side equally. No problem with that. But I, so I don't want to take four months. So we're, we're in the same place, essentially, other than we followed the chairman's guidance to black out the names. I don't know if there's an executive session option or Todd, what you think the right answer is on personal identifying information. It doesn't matter to me, but I'm not the recipient of the money. And we're, we're you know, there's, there's privacy concerns, but however council guides us to get you the information, the committee the information, I'm fine. I don't, I guess, I guess I would say, you know, in terms of the, 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 the privacy information, I guess I would say just in terms of if, if you talk about the concept of an executive summary and you're both in consensus that, that okay, yeah, we need to know where this money has gone. I guess there's maybe a difference in what I thought, which was, you know, okay, so this executive summary would essentially say, uh, you know, these are, the, these are the dollars that we received. These are how those dollars were spent. And this is the need that we have in this particular category, you know, for the, you know, whether it be for the coming year or the coming future years in terms of how those funds would be spent, you know, in the future and what they would be anticipated for. And I think you've kind of alluded to some of that because obviously with the, the escrowed purse funds, um, you know, that the, uh, the proposed uh, developers of the racetracks, um, you know, are, are looking at that figure in terms of what would be made available to them should any one of them be granted a license. So I, I guess, so, you know, can you do the executive summary or, or is it specifically that you're both looking at, you want to know who who actually received and which particular organization received, you know, the line item dollars that were spent by that respective industry. So I'm not as obsessed by the line item as Mr. Goldberg okay. is. I just, I just want to know how the programs are working. Cause like, I, I believe them that there were 35 races. I just can't find them. And I, and I want to see like where it went. And, and then you can see who got the money for breeding. It's, a, it's simple. Um, but, and, and as to the executive summary on the bucket for purses, well, that we've fully briefed already. That's the stuff that Peter and I put in long ago. So that, that doesn't take any additional time and we can brush it up for you. And it's the, it's the Dr. Ray report and it's the investors and, and it's important, but it's, it's been baked. These are two new areas that we've never addressed directly in the past. And so it seems to me, again, um, that we need to, 
talk amongst ourselves as to how do we evaluate these buckets, what are the criteria, and then apply them to the facts. And the executive summary you described of each breed saying, here's what we need, is one half of what I view the executive summary to be, but the other half okay. is in comparison to okay. the relationship to the other breed. Right. So I, I okay. tend to agree. I think that that's really helpful feedback yeah. that the brief will perhaps be more meaningful once we've decided on which criteria um, we want to consider. And I think in terms of the logistics, sort of moving with a you know a two-step process may actually be helpful as well, in that we can schedule a meeting to you know send a letter um, requesting a regulatory change to the commission and to discuss the criteria and then reconvene at a later date, maybe two to three weeks down the road, at which point we might know whether or not the commission is willing to entertain an emergency regulatory change, and we can then apply the criteria to the new method, or at that point, if we're not getting, sorry, I have some background noise you might be that's hearing. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> okay. If we don't get an emergency change, then we could apply sort of the old criteria using the old method. Do we need to call DSS? Everybody good? <laughs> That's why I stay right. muted, so don't, don't worry about that. So, um, so then I'm, I'm hearing one thing, I mean, in terms of, you know, with respect to establishing the criteria. So, and Mr. Savage and Mr. Goldberg, you can you can comment um, based on your understanding of what you both perceive the process to be, and that is, I was thinking that there'd be an executive summary that would be submitted to the committee prior to the vote uh, of uh, or the next meeting um, of the committee, and then. Um, but I think what you both are you both saying that you want those executive summaries submitted, and then we'd have a discussion about the criteria, and then take a vote. So my my vision is a meeting on the criteria with no executive summaries submitted, a consensus on the criteria, and then another meeting that would actually do the split, applying the criteria to the facts. For which there would be an executive summary by each side. Uh, I would just uh, add one other thing in there, Mr. Chair, if that's helpful. Um, and I think this yeah. should be open to any committee members, not not just uh, Mr. Savage and Mr. Goldberg, but those <laughs> those two members in particular. Yeah. But I would say that prior to the next meeting, anyone who has a proposed a set of criteria that don't get into the specifics as to how the criteria should be applied. And this is what Mr. Savage, I think, is talking about. We don't want to get into that part of it. But just what the criteria should be uh, yep. might be helpful for the committee members to look at in advance of the first part of the meeting that, um, that we talked about. So if it's a two-step process, as Ms. Katonic mentioned, which I think makes a lot of sense, the first step of the process would be determining what the criteria should be. So if um, any committee members have any recommendations as to what the criteria should be and can circulate uh, that to staff, not to, the whole, um, not to the whole committee, but just to staff, that would be helpful um, as a starting point. And then the second part would be once you have the criteria that we set up a second meeting, whether it's two or three weeks later or when have you, and that's when an executive summary, I think, would probably be helpful as to how the new criteria should be applied. And that's when you get into things like how the money is presently being spent and what the needs are and what have you. So that's that's kind of my takeaway and the refined uh, uh, thought I had on um, uh, the best way to proceed. M Mr. Chairman, if, if I may. Yeah. We talk about new criteria and, and Putting, the, putting together criteria for this new method of addressing the split. We're not suggesting that we, re, we, that we rewrite the statute, are we? That we rewrite section 60. I don't think that's what we're trying to no. do. No. Okay, so I think we still have to follow the law. Unless I'm wrong, 
Attorney Grossman let me know, I think we need to follow 23K section 60B where criteria were laid out for this committee when addressing a split. The statute does state these criteria, including but not limited to, we know what that means. So, but, but the stat, you know, this statute was, was, was drafted after years and years and years of people probably better than me, even me and Mr. Savage, believe it or not, uh, looking at, looking at other states, other jurisdictions, and coming up with criteria that were uh, important and were a good method of addressing these types of splits. So I just want to make sure that we're not looking to rewrite the statute, but we're looking to use the statute to help us and take the criteria and say, okay, purses, you know, for purses, it should be these three parts of it. For health and welfare, it should be this piece of the puzzle. So I don't think, I don't well, think we're necessarily looking at new criteria, but looking at taking the criteria that were enumerated in the statute and apply them separately to each of the three tiers. That, so, so when the committee met in October of 2014, it enacted under the including but not limited to uh, 12 or whatever, whatever, yeah, criteria. Yes. whatever A through O is additional criteria. And that, that's what I envision here is, is just exactly what they did in 2014. To the extent this committee agrees that additional criteria are relevant because of the new methodology, we should agree to that. To the extent the old criteria are applicable and the statutory criteria are applicable, then we should also, of course, apply that. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't change the statute back then. What we said was we used the criteria given to us by the legislature and said in the future, here, here are things that we think, which are sort of, if you look at them, Joe and, and, and Commissioner Cameron will, will back me up on this, I'm sure, because we were there when we did that. They were all sort of fleshed out from the original criteria. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't, there wasn't, wasn't a number of cats in the barn as a criteria. All, all those discretionary criteria had to do with live racing. So it was pool size. I mean, I don't remember them. It was pool size. It was live. It was, it was things that were, it, it was more specific to the criteria that are already in the statute. So we weren't creating new ones. We were fleshing out basically what we were asked to do by the legislature. I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I don't want to rewrite the statute. I don't think we have to. I think we have to stick to the statute. Yes, I think there's some there's some latitude and leeway, but I don't think we we want to go down the road of saying, well, you know, now we should look at you know the number of housing stocks in Massachusetts. No, it, and I I think you know that the the hypothetical is handy, but not not particularly relevant. Um, the third statutory criteria is the relative needs of each horse racing industry. So. I mean, I think that, you know, gives, gives the latitude for, for you to do what you did in 2014, which is add additional related criteria. Now, I, I completely agree with Mr. Goldberg that if the criteria that we're coming up with is from the moon and is contrary to the statute or not consistent with the statute, absolutely not going to adopt it. But um, I think there are some things like, I'll just throw out one that, that, that occurs to me is like, do the, the, the main benefits of, say, the breeding program or health and welfare go stay within Massachusetts or go out of Massachusetts? I think that's consistent with the five criteria. I think we ought to consider making that a criteria here. So that's the, that's what I'm envisioning. I agree. That I agree that the, the breeding races should be raced in mass, and that's a better thing for the for the state, obviously. So that's I, I don't I don't that's but that's part of the racing criteria that we've dealt with. So. Yeah, I mean, I have no issue with those. So in terms of planning and, and you know, kind of moving forward and, and you know, scheduling, scheduling of meetings. So I, I, you know, my initial thought was that it could be accomplished. It could hopefully, you know, or that it could be accomplished in one meeting. But I, I take it there's, there's a consensus among the members that, that these four items as I'm looking at them um, uh, be taken over the course of two meetings. And that is that you've first got the amendment to the regulations, which would uh, allow both the committee and the commission um, 
to the Gaming Commission to consider the new method of looking at each of the three categories. And then the second part of that is also establishing whether it be additional criteria or some criteria when you're looking at those respective percentage allocations. And that would be the first meeting. The second meeting would be a review of the executive summaries that are submitted based on the criteria that the committee has established. And then from there, taking a vote as to whether or not there needs to be any change in the respective allocations. That sounds right to me. Sounds right to me too. Okay. Commissioner Cameron? Yep, that sounds appropriate. Thank you. Ms. Katana? Yeah, I have some more background noise. So oh, okay, sorry. That's okay. You agree. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So then with that, um, uh, I guess in terms of now, um, you know, when we look at item three and then we were looking at item four on our agenda. Um, so I think we're moving on to uh, the discussion of next steps to now say, okay, we're going to start to schedule these meetings to then have put this plan into place. So I would call upon the members to, um, you know, propose in terms of what they need. I mean, obviously, Attorney Grossman, um, with the proposed language that we'd like to submit, and then with the committee members each, you know, at their own uh, volition to be able to submit their own criteria that can be considered for the next scheduled meeting. Um, and Attorney Grossman, just in terms of your timing, um, you know, in um, terms of putting together some proposed language, uh, what would you think you'd need for that type of timing? Um, I think we are, let's see, today's the 14th. Um, yeah. You know, the, I, I would say by the last week of May, okay. you know, maybe towards the end of the week, if there's availability, okay. that, I mean, this is ambitious and there's, there's, let's be clear about that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that if everyone's yeah. um, okay with, with that approach. Um, and and I I will certainly do my part if that's if that's the direction we want to move in, and I would say for that uh, the last week of May I think would be adequate at least on my part to okay. get what I need to get done. Okay, and then to the committee members looking at you know your proposed criteria, um, what timeline would you be looking at to be able to submit? something so that all of the other committee members can review at the next meeting. So you mean after, after the end of May meeting, how long do we need to put together our executive summaries? Is that the question? Well, I, th I, don't, I don't think we said we'd schedule a, a meeting at the end of May. I think it's just, it, I just was kind of trying to get from Attorney Grossman's perspective, you know, how, how long he needs to be able to submit something to us to be able to to review okay and then, and then as well as the committee members with respect to their submissions of the criteria and then you know the scheduling of the meeting <laughs> to take the votes on those two items well let me let me just refine what i said uh, mr okay. mr chairman um, I, yeah. I, I may have misunderstood okay i think i can have my part done by the end of the next week um, and circulated right. to the members. I was thinking yeah. if you wanted to have a meeting the last week of May, okay. Oh, okay. Um, if everyone was on board with that, I think we could pull it off. Um, okay. All right. 
but that would yeah and and can i just make one other point mr chairman real quick and committee sure. members i i also just want to be mindful of course of the open meeting law and when people submit things we can't submit documents to other members that include your opinion about okay. how things um should go down so if you have proposals for criteria i would recommend that you submit them to ms bedard or myself and we can try to synthesize them without um, indicating whose opinion it is so people okay. can start thinking about some of the criteria oh, and, and dr lightbound of course too who just popped up on my screen um, okay so um, we can try to synthesize uh, some of the criteria so you at least have something to think about but you really can't have you know, Commissioner Cameron says this is what the the, uh, the criteria should be because that would be a violation of the open meeting. Okay. So, um, if you want to shoot for the last week of May, if members think they might be able to submit some comments to Dr. Lightbaum, myself, Shara, I think we could pull it off. Okay. I can get comments submitted by the last, the end of May, but I can't do a meeting on the 28th or 29th. Like I could get comments in by the 28th to, okay. to, to Todd. All right. Or the first week of June, perhaps? That, that I can do. Uh, I'm available whenever the committee would like to meet. I'll make, my, I'll make myself available. With this uh, remote access, I could be anywhere and join the meeting. So I'm available for, for an hour for you folks anytime. Right. I'll do it on a Sunday if you'd like. I, I would be, but I'm literally driving back from Florida and I won't be able to do it. <laughs> All right. okay. Those two days All right. are. All right. Uh, so I, I actually did a Zoom meeting with someone that was driving back from Georgia this week, but I'm not saying you should do that, Joe. So I'm, I'm okay. We don't want a distracted driver. No, no. You no. Don't want to... He's in the back seat. He's not driving. <laughs> I am definitely driving. It's, it's... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll share offline why this is. Should we look at our calendars for the first week in June? Yeah, and I was going to throw out there as, as far as June, you know, do Thursday seem, obviously seem to be amenable well, to committee members? We do have a commission meeting scheduled now uh, for the 4th of June. Okay. So it's it's kind of every other Thursday that the schedule frees up for uh, for us. Do any other days that work week for the committee members? Third works for me. The, the third work, the, the fourth and fifth aren't great. The third works fine for me. Same here. Okay. Then the third works for me as well. June 3rd. Ms. Kadona? Uh, that works for me in the afternoon. I have a 10.30 to 11.30. Okay. And that's it. How do your afternoons look for the other committee members? Flex. I, I have I, availability. I can, I can be available. Are we thinking one o'clock? What are we thinking? One o'clock or two o'clock? Would that work? One, one or right. two? Either two o'clock. How about two o'clock? Okay. Well, yeah, two two, two o'clock work for everyone? Yes. It, it does. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll schedule then a meeting on June 3rd at two o'clock. And at that meeting, we will consider the proposed amendment to the regulations for the new method of the allocations for the Racehorse Development Fund. And then as well as the criteria for those uh, allocations to be considered. Sounds right. agreeable. Okay. Yes. And and the committee members are going to submit to Mr. Grossman. Um, their proposed their criteria. thoughts yeah. on the matter, and he will synthesize as he as he said. Yes. 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 So should we submit those to Shara? And you can, yeah, you can you send them to yeah. Shara yeah. And, and copy oh, yeah. me or Dr. Lightbaum. Um, okay. As long as it doesn't go to Commissioner Cameron or the other committee members, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Great. Great. Uh, then in terms of uh, the next part of it is, is then um, 
talking about um, you know the, the the timeline to establish for um, executive summaries to then be submitted and then um, you know in essence and then you know uh, considering a vote that would be a recommendation to the Gaming Commission based on the proposed new criteria. Are we going to, did we decide to, that we're going to submit, and maybe Attorney Grossman, are we going to submit our proposed amendment to the regulations at the same time as we propose any new split if, if we do, or separately? I, th I think you probably do them separately. Um, the, we can get the ball rolling on the amendment side and um, so maybe, after, the, after the third, if we agree on that ship, you suggest shipping that to the gaming commission. Yeah, we can get that moving. And if obviously if the commission has any concerns or objections, we'll bring that back to the committee's uh, attention and we can try to refine again, what we're, we're talking, what the proposal is. But I think you, the committee can operate, you know, hoping slash assuming that things will go consistent with the way you've discussed it today, just in the name of time. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear, Mr. Chairman, on the, on the, yeah. the timing and, the, and the, the steps, so we don't have that issue. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman. So I guess, sorry. No, I just think if, if I could get three weeks after we set the criteria to get my, uh, executive summary and that would be great. So that would be June 24th. Okay. Mr. Goldberg, is that acceptable to you? Whatever Mr. Savage needs. I, I you know, the, the, the problem that I have is, I mean, so June 24th for submitting them and then, then I, I, I'm suggesting what a week later for a meeting. Correct. Yeah. So we're, we're into, we're into July, you know, I, I guess I was hopeful of getting this, getting this sort of done into the gaming commission before the end of June, but you know, that's, that's the time he needs. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. And Thank then, uh, okay. Then scheduling a meeting in July then at that point, uh, what works? So if we say June 24th is when the executive summaries would be submitted, is that agreeable? Good. Yes. Okay. All right. And then scheduling a meeting in July. How about Wednesday, July 1st? Might be out of town that week. Um, if we're allowed to, <laughs> to travel. Um, yes. I do have a meeting scheduled that week. Okay. Next, would the next Wednesday, the 8th work? I could do Wednesday the 8th. That works for me as well. The, the 8th is, works for me. Um, that for us is the, um, the week before, uh, the week in between, Mr. Grossman, uh, help me out with this, that I think that Wednesday would be uh, an agenda setting, right? But those are short and typically done at 10 in the morning, correct? That, that's correct, yes. So, um, uh, so it, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so uh, I would be available after, um, I, I guess I'm, afternoon is better is what I'm saying because of some commission okay. responsibilities. So would two o'clock work for everyone on, I guess we're looking at July 8th? Yes, yeah. that's fine for me. It would be okay. for me as well. Okay. Good here. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Katonic? Yes, that works for me. July, July 8th. Okay. So, July 8th at, at 2 p.m. then. Okay. Okay. All right. So, we've got a, a plan for the next steps. I think, you know, uh, also on, on July 8th, I would say at that point in time, we'd obviously need to talk about the schedule. Um, you know, moving forward from that point in time in terms of, in terms of how we address, um, you know, the, the scheduling of meetings for, um, for any sort of consideration 
that needs to be made at, at that point. So, um, so at this point in time, uh, we've got the schedule moving forward. So June, uh, I guess what we would do now is, uh, is there any other discussion uh, that any of the committee members needs to have at this point in time? No, just, but just, just to clarify, because so I'm not yep. so I'm sure. The second yep. meeting on July 8th, we're going to yep. review the executive summaries yep. and then vote as to a potential new allocation, new split. Correct. So the word vote Correct. will be in word vote will be in that agenda. Correct. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at this point in time? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All right. And then let me run through. So, Mr. Savage? Yes. Mr. Goldberg? Yes. Commissioner Cameron? Yes. Ms. Katana? Yes. And Fitzgerald? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you all. I really appreciate your time and efforts in doing this. So. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent job. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Appreciate okay. your time. And Mr. Thank Grossman, you. thank yeah. you very Mr. much. Mr. Grossman and Chairman, and the idea of public comment, that was I think that was very important to the community. Yep. Thank you yep. for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Stay safe. Yep. Bye -bye. You too. You too. You too.